Welcome in, everyone. We're back in Cedarburg today, focused on continuing to expand the city that we started once Cities 2 actually released. And we're going to be working on a couple of things today, including growth in the city in terms of getting in some higher density items, including high density residential, along with adding a little bit of mass transit in the form of trains. So if you're new to the channel, please hit the subscribe button, leave a like, and drop a comment down below with your thoughts or ideas for future videos. I mentioned in one of the recent episodes we added to the series that there are a couple things that I wanted to start working towards, and one was specialized industry, and one was also getting some mass transit, especially trains in. So we're going to work on a couple of things having to do with trains, being the rail yard, a cargo station, and a passenger station. Now, I don't know that all this is going to be laid out perfectly at this sort of first go around edit, but I think we'll slowly tailor and tweak it as the city begins to expand towards the rail line that we set up. But for now, we're going to start with the rail yard, and I'm going to carve out a little bit of space here near the industrial area. And part of that is because I do want the industrial area to sort of hug the rail yard. I want it all to be in the same spot and sort of working together on this side of the city. But we need to carve out that space against the mountain, which unfortunately, there's just going to always be some sort of cliff here, it seems. But this is going to end up being the sort of edge of our city anyway. It's just figuring out how to do this in a way that looks, I guess, more aesthetically pleasing than how I'm setting it up now. So the interesting thing about the assets for the trains, the rail yard and the cargo station specifically, is that certain parts of the asset only face one way, right? I only have connections on one side, uh, which is kind of odd to me. I sort of wish that that wasn't the case or that there was, you know, pass throughs built on that building there uh, so that the trains could come in from either direction. And the same thing sort of happens with the cargo yard, right? Where you only have uh, like one entrance into the cargo yard. So I'm probably going to put the rail yard in a place where I can you know, expand upon it in a way with like industrial around it and also have a like route that runs around the rail yard. But the cargo station would be much more of a dead end um, nearby. Uh, so that's the intention right now for those two buildings. And I think the train passenger station will actually be offset from all of this a little bit. And in the newer part of town we set up um, recently, which I'll show you guys in a little bit. Now, obviously, I generally know where I want to place this. The issue is that I do feel like I have to flip the building the other way around for it to connect the way that I sort of see it connecting into the city infrastructure. But this is going to create a little bit of a challenge because now we have to have the road uh, come down to the opposite side of the railway from where the industrial is. So we need some sort of bridge or something like that running over some of the train lines, which isn't that big of a deal. In fact, it actually matches something from a childhood home where over the rail yard, we had like a bridge running. So you could see down over like the entirety of the rail yard just about. And that's where they'd have like trains and storage and all that jazz. But I'm not really so much worried about the storage or anything like that. Having a bunch of extra train lines in here. I just want one sort of wrapped around the rail yard itself. And then everything else will be sort of interconnected. The trouble is I just need to make sure I have room to sell this bridge and road, right? I don't want it to seem too forced. And that also goes for the railways. When I put them down, I want to make sure that there's enough room to make some of these turns and to make it feel, you know, pretty appropriate for what it is. But I know that some of what we set up will probably be altered as we progress. I'm not going to want everything to be exactly how I set it down, uh, especially with the line coming into town. I think that's going to be tweaked and altered as we continue to expand the city and we sort of fill up everything from the waterway down into the mountain um, edge here. So I've gone ahead and set up a bridge that'll run over the railways as we continue to draw these out. And that's connected to some of the major arteries that run, you know, further north from where we are right now. But what I run into is a typical Cities 2 thing. And I'm not running any mods right now. I actually disabled them. I know there's been some issues with some of the mods and along with the updates coming out for Cities 2. But um, I'm still <laughs> kind of getting frustrated with some of the road design quirks and... Uh, I guess it's network quirks more so than road design quirks, but the, the overlap thing coming up and just some of the oddities that you run into with, you know, how Cities 2 wants you to place things. For example, I placed a bridge at one point that was lumpy because it was reacting to what was beneath it. And it's like, just put put a plane across. Like, it works, but I just wanted to do it. <laughs> so I think somewhere I saw that there's an Anarchy mod out now, and that might be something that I look at pretty soon. Um, even though Cedarburg was meant to be relatively vanilla, I just find that there's definitely some things that I need uh, to have um, to to play this game the way, a little bit closer to the way I want to, to play it, despite trying to find better ways and more appropriate ways for building for the sort of the context of what Cities 2 is and how it operates. I just keep running into this wall of like, I need, I need more flexibility or forgiveness for what I'm trying to set up. So it wouldn't surprise me that, you know, pretty soon I may start having to actually, you know, go back to adding the mods in and keeping them updated. I disabled them because I knew that the update was kind of coming, right? We, they had talked about it plenty and 
I figured that was going to break some things as well as working on 5B1C. I couldn't have any mods on for that as well. So I went ahead and took them off, but now I'm like, I'm itching to have them uh, reinstalled into uh, the game because, you know, like I said, I'm just running into some of these things that I'm just like, please give me uh, more control over some of the things happening, especially with networks for some reason. I do intend to continue using dev mode, at least until we get things like, you know, some sort of surface painter or something like that, that is, you know, set up in a different way. Uh, because right now I, I just need, I need a little bit more detailing ability and sp specific to just like surfaces. That's often all I want to add. So I would expect those to come back at some point soon. I don't know if you guys are still diving into trying to add mods or using dev mode. Um, I'd love to hear if that's something that you guys are still playing around with. I just feel that to some extent, like that flexibility can be really impactful for what we're seeing in cities too. I'm super excited for some content creator packs and some mods to actually hit the game from a standpoint of it being integrated better and perhaps the way that the city's two devs wanted it to be <laughs> instead of sort of the way it is right now. Now it is very purposeful to have the train line closer to the mountain because I feel like that'll help me reduce how many times you're sort of crossing the train. I, I don't, I don't really want to cross the railway too many times. I don't want to break it up uh, and I don't want to have to, you know, continue to have like these areas where cars are stopping the trains from passing through. I want to limit that as much as possible and keep it flowing. That way be while we have, you know, vehicle traffic, we're not having train traffic because of the vehicle traffic. And I do expect traffic to actually increase here pretty soon. In fact, you'll see it later in this episode, because as you may have noticed, uh, we have a pretty sizable demand shift, right? There is demand, which is the big thing. And that is across, you know, everything from offices to medium density residential weren't that weren't as popular uh, in a couple episodes ago. And that is largely due to the fact that we've added a college and university and a college campus, basically, that is now paying dividends for what people and Sims want in the city. Now, because we've been able to make that demand go up, you're obviously going to need to accommodate the demand. So we're going to be adding some more medium density to the downtown area, especially in the residential format. We'll also be adding some high density commercial and some more mixed use and some high density residential. So there's plenty to do in the downtown area. Well, we're also going to be placing some offices throughout. So we continue to provide jobs, but uh, I think we're probably getting close to needing to work on specialized industry so that we can start unlocking some um, industrial buildings that can accommodate uh, more jobs, right? So um, we're going to have a lot of people moving in. We're going to have some bursts of population. And with that, you always get those sort of waves of traffic. And you'll see those later in this episode, in fact, where I, I am going to maybe disable some crosswalks, right? Just to help with traffic flow as people are moving into the city because it just happens so quickly. So if your city feels relatively stagnant, I would really recommend going to check out our previous episode because it breaks down what the college campus can do and why it's important for your zoning uh, and demand really more so than zoning. Um, how you get sort of the spread that you want uh, with regards to the demand, because it's easy to get in that position where it's like, you know, folks only want low density residential and industry, right? And, you, you know, typically with city building, you want a little bit more than that. So I wanted to show this and I was going to cut this out because I've had to do this bridge a couple times to get it the way I look. And this is where I think mods will eventually help me out here. If I go back and add some of those to our gameplay, uh, you can see this bridge is bumpy and it's reacting to sort of where uh, the train lines or the railways are. And the interesting thing about this is that it's it's doing it, it's reacting and it obviously can't compute that it just needs to be a smooth road across. Uh, I want it, the bridge to be even. And this is one of those interesting areas where Cities 2 just it's intuitive, but it also just doesn't give you a certain amount of control um, that you might want. And so now we have this bumpy bridge, which just looks kind of goofy. And there's really not much I can do to fix that without some sort of support from outside just base game um, Cities 2. Because largely what I typically want with something like this is I want the filled road on either end and then I want the middle to be pillared. and. Obviously, I could do this a little bit easier if I had uh, one of the mods that I had in the installing mods video. I'm blanking on the name right now, like road upgrades or something along those lines. And I don't have that installed right now where I could just force the field to be in certain areas. This is one of those quirky areas of Cities 2 where, again, I've, I've said this even in early access, like Cities 2 gives you a lot of information and intuitiveness, but it also takes away some amount of control, which has been just like an interesting learning curve in a lot of ways is like, how do I manage this? Um, in a way that, you know, sort of makes sense for me and, and the way I play the game. Because largely, you know, I'm a detailer in Cities 1 and coming into this game, that like basically doesn't exist. And uh, so I've had to sort of adapt and try to figure out, you know, what can I offer? And so I do hope that you guys enjoy 
at least some of the conversation topics we're having and what we're doing and i do think that probably soon i'll make another like mod related video and we'll go over some of the new app, like creations that have popped up on github and stuff and and we'll see how that goes and what that can add to cedarburg but as you can see the city's gotten much larger and it's starting to look like something <laughs> and uh one thing that i did notice is that our sewage is sort of maxed out and instead of adding more sort of sewage outputs into the river we're going to go ahead and put a water treatment facility in right here in the industrial area and get that set up so it can help clean up some of the water and probably introduce it back into the water system uh, but it's something that we've been needing to add anyway i may end up moving it at some point but for now it'll cover what we need it to do and now we've connected the rail yard into the rest of the city so we do have infrastructure set up and i think this looks pretty good at least for now um and we could obviously go in here and work on some surfaces with dev mode or something like that just to make this seem a little bit more impactful in a way but uh we need to go ahead and start working on getting our cargo station integrated into the city and i'm not going to go very far uh, in terms of placement from the rail yard to get this set up now, since the cargo station pretty much acts as a dead end, I'm gonna incorporate it relatively close to the rail yard I've just set up. And we're gonna put it on this diagonal road and then potentially have that get elevated and be another option to cross over uh, the railways we've just set up. And hopefully this gives us enough room to do some curved rails into this little sort of open pocket area. So I know that I want this road to be extended. So we're gonna go ahead and place something at least as a placeholder for now and we'll get the cargo station placed uh, on this road. And I do like this asset. It actually looks pretty cool. So same with the passenger station for some reason. Um, I wish that the rail yard actually was a little bit more compressed in terms of the rails and the distance apart from one another, but uh, I do like these buildings. And I'm glad that the scaling just seems better on them compared to what we had in, in Cities 1. So something that I noticed though is that when the trains are coming out of the rail yard, they're gonna to need to basically back into this cargo station. So we're going to basically make a bypass of the main line and have an area here where trains can kind of queue up for that. Uh, because what was happening, I, I did this off cam briefly. I was just trying to test out how I wanted to work this out. And I noticed that the um, trains were like stopping and then backing in and it was causing some traffic. Some trains were disappearing. So I just basically deleted it because I can't explain it very well. Um, and we're going to make this kind of extra little area here uh, built off this main line. And then we're going to have um, a way for the trains to get in on uh, basically from either direction. And this actually solved the issue that I was running into uh, and clean this up a little bit. Um, although probably not perfect. Uh, I'm sure plenty of you have a better uh, way of doing this in your head but this is definitely not something that i am um super well versed in uh sort of like interchanges but i think it comes out all right sometimes you just have to shift some of the ends right like lengthen a little bit of the lines and that tends to help out a bunch with stuff i'm setting up is if i just lengthen it and i give it more space to sort of operate in its area you know <laughs> little changes like that can be just enough to make things look a little bit better um, unfortunately, now the college has a, <laughs> a whole rail system directly behind it, but I'm sure they won't mind too much. But once I fixed this and I gave it some time to just operate, it seemed to work fairly well. Um, and again, it's not perfect. <laughs> I end up having to make, you know, a few different sets of tweaks, but um, I think I got it into a place where it is functional and uh, we sort of get what we need done here. Um, and now trains can enter a little bit more smoothly than they were. Cause like I said, they were going past the entrance and then having to back in. It was creating a bunch of traffic flow issues. So I needed to give them plenty of space to be able to sit and not block a bunch of other trains and um, also have it so that they could connect and go in either direction because our lines are going to both sides of the rail system. And as you can see, we have one train sort of in a holding pattern. I want to fix that um, and again, make it so that there's plenty of room so that trains can sort of bypass this entirely and not get held up on this path so that it causes more issues later. So I guess the tip is to elongate things, make sure you have plenty of room and take your time. <laughs> Sometimes when I'm like recording and trying to set up a video, I am rushing through some of these aspects of the build and I end up cutting some of it, but some of it remains. And here we are trying to tweak something that I thought I had kind of figured out. And uh, obviously I did not. Um, and I obviously want to make sure there's enough lanes here to keep the sort of traffic flow up uh, but i do want to make sure this is interconnected with the rail yard because some of these trains will be spawning at the rail yard or getting repaired uh getting maintenance and uh then returning to their route so i'm just trying to make sure there's enough interconnectivity here but in the end it doesn't really look 
perfect by any means, but it seems to be functional at least. So that's nice. So you can see here on this next shot that there is some traffic flowing through here. Um, and we can continue to tweak this, obviously, and, and probably improve upon it. But for now, it is functional. And as we start to see the town coming in and growing in this direction, I think that'll help dictate how we can smooth out some of these lines or if we need to shift the position of anything. Still don't love that bridge, but I think I have some ideas how to fix it with mods later. Um, but again, we're going to wait and see how the city begins to fill up. But I need to start thinking about the passenger station, and I want to put that in a different place. Since that is something that you can have trains coming from a couple directions, I want to place it in a separate area um, and have it kind of cut through the city and break up some of the city. I don't know if that's a good idea <laughs> if I should just stick to what I have, but I don't want the passenger station like dropping off in the middle of the industrial area. So what I thought is, is actually having it sort of placed uh, in this neighborhood that we set up not too long ago. So I think once I'm able to smooth out some of this train and figure out tiers, having the train line run into this neighborhood and then altering some of the format of how the neighborhood is set up and having maybe some uh, row houses along the railway or something uh, might be an interesting take on how we can do something a little bit more unique. My only concern is all these cliffs, man. You start to level and, and make the area a little bit smoother to operate within and you get all these crazy cliffs. So I'm going to try to set up some different, almost like terraces, uh, but ultimately we're going to end here at the river with some sort of cliff. So I don't know, there's only so much I can do given the terrain and how it operates in Cities 2, which is an interesting thing within itself, but that's for another day. I just need to smooth it out and get a, at least a temporary line set up so that we can see what this will start to look like again as the city fills out and we start to move in this direction more. Um, but also, you know, how this can progress in this area will help dictate how the train line can sort of work around some of the roads and stuff so we don't have too many intersecting networks. Now, once we get the train station here set up, we'll connect it to the main lines and I'll have to figure out how to get some of these other networks these roads and the highway over or around uh the railway so we don't intersect it like I said I don't want to you know have too many spots where the trains have to stop um what'll be kind of interesting to see is um eventually once the city begins to expand this way uh how we can in, kind of make this all blend together but I will say this the uh, kind of off camera here and there I've been going in and adding some offices and things like that and slowly upgrading some of the downtown to more medium density um, and we'll have a little bit more of that later in the episode uh, because it is growing quite rapidly. I mean, you can see we have not lost any momentum in terms of the demand, uh, which is great. Now, I'm hoping this will begin sort of the start of all of our mass transit options. I'd like to get probably subways in um, and maybe a tram through downtown, you know, something like that. And obviously, we need to do buses. Buses is probably the priority moving forward in terms of mass transit. Um, eventually, I, you know, we want an airport. Um, that's not really something I've done a lot of in cities too, uh, because I've only built a couple of cities and uh, we just haven't gotten that far <laughs> in any of them. This is the most progressed city, even though I do admit that the progress here has been slow. I mean, we're eight episodes into the series and uh, really I've been more so focused on just talking about subject matter and doing this as a little bit of a slow burn and seeing sort of what we can do in the city and adapting to new ways of building and all that jazz, uh, as well as trying to help you guys uh, learn maybe um, something new about the game or help inspire, you know, what you can build. So it's slow, but I, it's been kind of fun to just build at a different pace. But I think that's going to change a little bit. We're going to need to start feeding a lot of this demand. So I think the city is going to start growing much quicker and, you know, in a way our videos will progress, you know, a little bit faster. Um, so we have a couple more things that I want to do in this episode. First, I want to add some zoning spots. Um, we're actually going to add in some high density commercial over here away from downtown near the cargo station we placed. I want to see what this looks like to have a couple taller buildings on this side of town um, and the distance from the downtown itself. And then we're also going to add another interchange and this interchange is going to be in a spot that we never really connected to the highway system, but I'll show you that. And uh, we're just going to use one of the predetermined like trumpet interchanges just to have uh, a different option for people to get into town because right now they're limited to the main um, highway system we put in uh, several episodes ago. So the focus here is just expanding where people can get into the city. And I think that'll help somewhat with our transit options. But ultimately, there's going to have to be some reworks to some areas, it seems. In addition to the high density commercial I just placed, I'm also going to add some low income housing because those show up as, you know, smaller towers as well. And we're going to see what this looks like in the distance of downtown. It might look kind of neat, it might look like almost like a town just outside of the town. I don't know. For now, let's go ahead and get this interchange in and I'm going to unlock a few squares so we have some room to operate. Again, I'm going to keep this pretty simple. We're just going to use this trumpet here and get this connected. 
Uh, my hope is that this starts to spread out some of the traffic flow in the city because right now they're sort of overwhelming just a couple of spaces, a couple of different networks because there are limitations to some of the um, connectivity I have. And that is sort of by design, but not intentional. Uh, there, there's some fixes I have to implement and this is probably one of them that will go a little bit of ways of helping, you know, folks enter the city and maneuver, uh, especially being connected to the main road. And I also think this area where we are placing this is going to be developed at some point, too. So that's probably when we'll actually go in and change the interchange so that we can um, have an option for folks just to get off and to this side of the city. I'm not really sure what's going to be on this side of the river. I don't know if it's going to be a continuation of downtown to some degree or maybe we kind of shift into just small town vibes, you know. I think pretty soon I do need to figure out that, you know, specialized industry and where we're going to place that. I mentioned that earlier. That's something that I want to highlight as an episode. Getting some farmland and stuff like that in would be awesome. Um, and I think we are getting very, very close to needing to do that for jobs and to just have, you know, some different variety in the city. Because I, I don't love our indus industrial pocket right now. I want to switch that out for something else, maybe spread it out some or maybe do it in little smaller pockets of themselves so that we can uh, shape that area a little bit differently because right now it just looks like I just pasted a ton of industrial uh, zoning down. So with some simple work, we got this connected and it's not perfect, but again, I think it's gonna be updated anyway down the road. Uh, let's work on doing some zoning changes in the downtown area. As you can see, this is kind of bulking up and it's starting to look a little bit more full of medium density and I've already started to expand that medium density off camera like I mentioned earlier. So we're just going to start converting low density housing into this medium density. And uh, by design, this is going to, you know, push us to actually put in more suburbs, uh, probably further outside of the city, because we're going to need to accommodate that low density demand as well. But for now, we're going to focus on getting more medium density in and also a little bit of high density. But I'm going to be pretty careful with this, you know, high density residential. I'm going to select it uh, sort of over, you know, medium density buildings that are already there that I just don't want anymore or that just uh, don't really do a whole lot for us. So some of the smaller buildings are just when it's a couple buildings that are like put together, you know, like two by four, I'll go in and actually replace those uh, with, you know, high density residential. So we'll get kind of medium sized towers out of that. The purpose of that to some degree is actually to sort of control where these buildings are going, because I found that placing a bunch of high density right next to each other um, adjacent to one another just doesn't look very realistic, in my opinion. So I like to place it very carefully with plenty of medium density around that high density to separate some of the buildings. And that, to me, tends to look better. You can also use mixed use around some of those high density buildings and you can mix it in with office space. But again, towers adjacent to each other sometimes just looks a little bit too imposing, um, whereas spreading out some lower like scale in terms of height buildings tends to balance everything out a little bit in my eyes. Something else I'm going to be adding in sort of in a similar fashion would be high density commercial. We obviously have a bunch of low density commercial around downtown to help transition us out of some of those buildings. but. I'm going to use some of the high density commercial to elevate some of those and then, you know, add those into pockets, sort of like I've done with mixed use and, and the high density uh, residential. Uh, we'll throw some of that in for diversity and just in terms of the buildings themselves. But I think that wraps up our build for this episode. I hope you guys enjoyed today. Obviously, it was mainly getting the train lines in and the stations uh, and doing a little bit of, you know, infrastructure maintenance um, and, of course, adding uh, some different zones to the city and, you know, starting to look at how the city can grow into a bigger city at this point. We're moving away from that smaller town vibe into larger cities. So be sure to subscribe, leave a like, drop a comment down below, and I'll see you guys next time. Take care.